Well, we finally got the right airbags for this 900. What we're going to have to do is go through and remove the decals off of them. You can see we've got the right fitting here. I've got seven on the bench, one mounted on the truck. So we're going to have to POR the metal brackets on these. Let them sit overnight. We'll put a top coat on them as well. And then tomorrow we can go ahead and put them on. Here's the airbag that was sent to me. And as you can see, there's no, it doesn't have the correct fitting on here. I don't even know what you even hook up to this one for a fitting. Because there's nothing that threads down into this one there's nothing that looks i i can't figure it out and i bought these on ebay and the guy i bought them from couldn't even tell me uh you know if there was a fitting that snapped into there or not so i don't know what works there the bags from kenworth were 249 or 269 dollars a piece this style one was $88. It showed in the picture that it had this fitting on there. This bag here was made in Turkey. I don't know where these were made. This is a torque something or other uh, rubber. Uh, the Kenworth bags are um, they're Firestone bags. Now the rubber might last longer. I don't know. But um, these bags here were like 90, 98 or $103 a piece. So we saved a considerable amount of money. Uh, the only reason why I wanted to change them out is the other ones were all rusted on the top. So we're going to pull these decals off, get them set up on the floor here spray the por on them let that get tacky and then we'll put a top coat of paint on them let that sit overnight and then we'll be able to install them tomorrow we've got our bracket primed up and ready for paint for the c5 nate's working on this little dump truck of ours we use this to pull around the skid steer trailer do a little bit of dirt work with it and whatever else like that. Another thing he had to do to it is we put front tires on it a while ago. And I noticed the other day when Jared was hauling straw with it, I said, them damn tires are wore right out again. So I thought it needed kingpins. They brought it in, put the tires on here. And, um, the kingpins were fine, however, the main tie rod going from one wheel to the other was bent. And I'll explain how that got bent. They got this truck stuck one day on the skid steer trailer. First, they tried pulling it out with wrapping the chain through this light bumper here. I mean, that bumper is just really on there for looks. So they screwed up there. They realized they were starting to pull the bumper off the truck. So then they went down in and they wrapped the chain around the I-beam. Going from one tire to the other. Well, when they did that, they draped the chain over the top of the tie rod. And they bent the tie rod, the cross tube. So there that is in the scrap pile here right now. Yeah. So, I don't know why we didn't notice that before we put the tires on it last year, but oh well. Maybe it didn't get done when that original thing got screwed up. It might have got done after the fact, I don't know. So, we'll go ahead and get these decals removed. And then get some POR done. Now we can get that valve painted. Now we can get that bracket painted. Now we can get this truck out of here, Nathan. He's also putting mud flat brackets on there too. If I didn't bring up the fact that we were putting mud flat brackets on there, they'd say, violation, you don't have no flaps on. So he's got some brackets that he put on there and we're getting ready to put some flaps on. 
right? Yeah. All right. Well, Nate's getting his flaps bolted on there. I was going to leave this out of the video and not talk about putting flaps on at all, but I figured I would have maybe 27 to 29 comments saying we need to get mud flaps on there. <laughs> There's the freaking phone. So we've got these airbags all ready to spray POR on. I have removed the decals and I ended up covering up our fittings with tinfoil. Tinfoil works all better than tape. Tinfoil works great for a number of things. You can put it on your cooking pan so you don't stain them or get food stuck to them. That's a good handy thing, isn't it, Nathan? <laughs> So we're going to spray that with POR. Now this POR, as soon as you open the container and reclose it again, if you get anything whatsoever up in this lip here, you will not be able to get the lid off. So as you can see, I've got a little less than half a gallon in that container and I had to pick that container up from uh, it was either Lowe's or Home Depot. Just the empty paint container. A one gallon empty paint container was $9.99. Years ago when I built hay wagons, I would use Central Tractor paint. A gallon of paint was $20. <laughs> so there's $10 wrapped up in your gallon uh, paint of paint. So I bought this little guy at um i don't know how it's gonna work on amazon the other day i seen it as a pouring spout i don't know if that's if this is gonna work or not i was hoping to be able to save this can because i'm only gonna need a half a pint of paint so i'm hoping that i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get that to work or not but we're gonna see a little bit so that thing's garbage might as well throw that right in the trash can gotta clean that up now i gotta i gotta get right after getting that crap out of the lid or when i go to use this next time the can's gonna be garbage so that's unfortunate oh well well let's get this job done here and i need to see who tried calling me Well, we've got that, <coughs> oh boy. Well, we've got the POR sprayed onto there. Nate's just bringing the C5 back in. We'll get our paint gun cleaned up. Let that tack up for an hour or so here. And then we can throw on the top coat. This container here, I've got this lid all cleaned out. What I'll do is I'll take a little bit of grease maybe put that in the top here and hopefully it doesn't glue itself shut so let's go ahead and clean ourselves up here and get ready for the top coat well that should do it for tonight we'll join back up with you guys in the morning hopefully this paint is dry enough on these airbags i did put quite a bit on there I've got the plate to go on the C5. Nate stripped all of the hydraulic lines and fittings off of this one. We're going to slide that guy ahead, put the plate on there, and bolt the valve right to it. So that'll be on tomorrow's agenda. We've got some extra hoses here. Um, 
we ran the hoses from the valve and around and it's just it's too many joints to try to keep sealed up so this should work a lot better having that valve on there like we have it on the 900 here that'll look about like that we've got some shocks to put on here as well and then we'll put the tires on actually you've got to get the bolts down through the fifth wheel plate here and uh get those tight so we'll join back up with you guys tomorrow all right so we got done painting these airbags and whatever the other night and then yesterday me and jared and andrew ended up going to the farm show and while we were gone to the farm show nate ended up getting these airbags on here so he has the seven airbags installed uh, four on this side and the front three on the other side I had one airbag when I went to paint this truck and we installed that one before we painted it so he's got them installed on there he went ahead and installed the bracket that we have set for the valve body he did what I told him to do however there's a couple things we've got to do to this that I didn't realize how it was going to lay out we have to cut a hole in this bracket here to bring in the oil supply to this valve body we could plug that off and oil supply it through the top of this inlet cover but I want to run my gauge off the top there like I did the other ones so we're going to go ahead and remove this valve body cut our hole in this piece here and then reattach it get the right fitting in there we can bring over our pressure hose which is here somewhere laying down in the frame rail right there or something we'll bring that over plug into actually it's right here so it's right there plug into the front of the valve body then we'll have to do something to return oil out of this valve body down into our filter head here and that returns oil bang right back to uh, the tank now this tank here I don't know how they have this one designed the other tanks this is a buyer's tank the other tanks that I bought from buyers they have the bung on the back side right about in that area there and what they have is a divider in the tank so that when the oil returns back into the tank it's got some time to circulate with the oil that's already in there to help cool the oil down so that it's not sending the oil direct right back to the pump this one might have a diffuser on it and when it comes back into the tank it miss and it goes into a spray pattern because if you didn't have that on there the oil would come back in at a pretty good rate of speed and it would make its way right back to uh, the pump so you'd be circulating the same oil through the system continuously and you don't want that you want to be able to cool uh, the oil outside of running it through an oil cooler so we'll get this unbolted see what that looks like get our hole cut and then reattach it hook up our um, wing couplers out of here now I have uh, this tall boy here that's a four-way it's um, dual action um, I'm just looking for the word here but at any rate we need to run this single I've got a single acting uh, spool in there so I went and removed this uh, double acting spool We'll plug off port A, and uh, we'll be able to use this for a dump trailer someday. If that's the route we end up going, it'll be this truck will be set up for it. We've got the 900 set up, and then of course the uh, Western Star. It's unfortunate that we had to do all this work all at one time because it's really slowing me down with getting some of these other projects done but it um 
it just made sense to do this now and our valve body was starting to screw up anyway so let's go ahead and get this off and get our hole cut and get everything reattached i am repeating myself over and over and over again here so let's get to it well we have our hole marked out i'm gonna cut that round hole in that vertical plate there and we're going to use this hypertherm power max 600 i got this plasma cutter on ebay a few weeks ago we'll go ahead and put it to use once again here so what i did is i took and traced out a hole saw i don't really want to use the hole saw because this material is quarter inch and i just don't want to spend the hole saw on drilling that shirt or that thick ah, material. So we'll go ahead and punch a hole in here. We don't have a good enough round. that hole punched in there. Now we can just set this guy up here, like so. Looks like we might want to maybe put the hose on with the valve body out here, I think. all right we are about ready to wrap up this job we're going to send juice through the system here in just a couple of minutes i thought i'd show you what i had done up to uh, this point we've got the valve body bolted down we've got the pressure line coming in from the front side from the hydraulic pump which is mounted to the PTO on the bottom of the transmission that's feeding the valve and then we're returning oil through the filter and that's going back into uh, the tank I've got this set up just like the 900 just like the Western Star we are hooking direct into the valve body with the manure trailer and the silage trailer are going to run off this rear valve. We've got a single acting valve up on the front side. We can run a, a truck hoist, whether it be a dump trailer or what have you, off of the front valve. Now, I've had some of you ask me questions on, you know, hey, what are you using for a hydraulic pump? What are you using for the hydraulic valves? I don't know who's watching these videos. I don't know who you guys are. I don't know who's asking these questions, but some of this stuff I'd like to keep tight to my chest here. I, I don't want to let too much information out because uh, there's other guys that are doing this. I've got a lot of time and I, I've made a lot of mistakes throughout the years and I've figured out here what works 
are the best. Now you're going to be asking, well, why are you changing everything now? Well, for a short time there, when I was building these trucks, putting hydraulic systems on these trucks, the hydraulic uh, place that we were buying stuff from, they went out of business. They went out of business about the same time well, I'm not even going to say what kind of valve this is because I've already talked about it before. They went out of business about the same time this company was sold to another company. I couldn't get these freaking valves anymore. Every place I called, yeah, I want blah, 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 blah. What? I need this for a pump. What? I had to learn everything all over again. So I got a hold of this one place. I trusted them. I bought... I don't know how many valve systems, uh, truck 14, truck 15, the Freightliner, this truck here, this one here. I've got maybe five or six systems. <laughs> this is the valve unit I was going with. I said, you know what, maybe that's the next best thing. You know, we're turning the page here. This technology here is maybe 20 years newer. Freaking garbage. Garbage. I don't know if it was earlier on in this video or if it was the video prior to this, but this is where the handle goes on to. You'd have a handle here like that. We've got this rubber boot. We've got a a spring kind of inside here and moisture would get inside here this would fill up with dirt and then the tolerances were so tight that once that filled up with dirt and grease and grime this valve wouldn't stroke fully in one direction or the other so what we did and I didn't do it on this one because this one was mounted sideways but all the other ones are mounted just like this we drill the hole in the bottom of this little aluminum housing just so that any condensation or water, whether it run in through the top here, uh, I mean, this is, this is what this looks like here. Frickin' absolute garbage. I should have pulled this apart uh, before I started this video. But you can see right down in here all the garbage it's like a ball and socket that falls in there we learned what was going on with them after they're about two years old like i said drill a hole in here because they would freeze let the water drain out we've got the air control mounted uh, on the other end another thing you'll notice is how small these ports are this is a number 12 uh boss fitting this is the work section here we've got uh pressure we've got the oil coming in here a little tiny hole uh on the inlet cover and then we have a power beyond and then we're returning the oil on this outside we're returning through a number 16 uh number 12 ports on this valve over here we run out of the valve with a number 16 boss uh, or straight thread o-ring fitting or a lot bigger come out of the back side can't remember if that's a 20 yeah that's a number 20 number 20 on the return and this one here just happens to be a 16 on the way in but some of them are a 20 on the way in just depends on how you get the inlet cover uh, design. So we had a problem with the hydraulic pump that was originally on this truck with that valve system, and we replaced the pump. We replaced the pump, we upsized a little bit, put the same size pump that we had on the 900, and the valve system wasn't really up to par and it slowed down the oil flow too much and we spent the pump. Uh, there was a pump on there before this one. 
So we burned that one up and we started to think or started to realize that that valve was only opening about halfway and the pump could overcome the valve but it, it overheated the oil, overheated the system and then it kind of screwed up that pump. And we think this pump is also screwed up because the valve body there's something wrong with that valve body. We kind of thought it had a relief problem, but I think we ruled that out and we've just kind of discovered that throughout the problems that we had with that valve, it kind of, it might have scarred this pump that's on this truck here, but we're going to find out. So we're going to fire up here. We're going to power this unit. We've got this, uh, gauge assembly on here this reads gallons per minute flow and it also reads the pressure so we're going to let that run see how it does if it maintains a decent pressure and it doesn't fall off its face we'll know the pump is good but if it starts to fade we're going to realize that we've got to replace this pump and we'll never have to uh, do it again now I've got on this inlet cover, I'm coming off the top of the inlet cover with a pressure line going to a pressure gauge. On this truck here, I don't have a console in the truck. I have a toggle switch, a single toggle switch right in the dash for running the spreader valve or the, the hydraulic valve on this truck. I don't have a toggle switch in there as of right now for this single acting valve. So I don't have a console in there. We ran the pressure line up to the gauge. The gauge is setting right there. Take a peek through the back window, bang, bang. You can watch the gauge as you're pumping the load off to see whether or not you still have manure in the tank. So why don't we go ahead, we'll fire up get the truck running, engage the PTO, get juice flowing through this system here. We'll load the system and we'll let it run under load for a little while and we'll see what this is doing. I, I don't have a pump on the shelf. I ordered one the other day. Um, I put the pump I had on the shelf on the Western Star. I was a little late at the draw here to get one ordered and I just I, I didn't get one ordered on time so I if this fails and doesn't do the trick we're gonna have to kick this truck out the door and uh, wait till that pump comes in and get it on here so let's go ahead and fire up and we'll try to see how this pump responds to the good valve We got Jared's gonna give us a hand here. We got we can only get 2,500 psi here, and we're hitting 36, 35, 36 gallons a minute. I do have a couple of leaks. We're leaking again right here. 
and I'm leaking out of this plug here so we're gonna have to address that I wanted to throw a little bit more paint on here but we'll have to wait till we get our oil leaks fixed so I don't really have to be honest with you I don't have the correct plug setting in that port relief hole right there so we're gonna have to get the correct plug in there and uh yeah it's hard to say whether or not this pump is any good it's not putting out as much pressure than it should but it's putting out a satisfactory amount to work with the manure tanker so we might just use this one until the pump completely craps out and then we'll uh, replace it so with that being said that is going to do it for this video now the next video after this is kind of mixed up you're going to see some of that truck in it um we started off the day after i got done feeding this morning uh gentleman showed up to load that 900 mixer so rather than put it in this video i made a video of it all by itself um so that video will be coming out uh after this one so we will catch you at the next video i want to thank everybody for watching and we'll uh catch you to the next video take it easy folks